with them as well. So uh, David's going to assist him. We're, we're going to dim the lights, folks, and be quiet for a little while and, um, and light a candle for each one of them. So uh, we, we'll turn it over to Teddy and to David at this time. You look up on the table, we have our classmates who are no longer with us. And I thought, uh, Diane and I were talking, that perhaps when we call out somebody's name, if uh, you remember something uh, about that person, if you just want to stand up and say something briefly, I'd like to start off with Jimmy Williams. And I remember Jimmy Williams being just a, he was a, he was a real buddy to me. I was kind of a small guy when I was in uh, in high school, and I never forget. One afternoon, we were playing touch football, and John Zachary had a tendency to pick on me sometimes. <laughs> and so we were playing ball, and John, I don't know what I did to him, but I had a way of antagonizing people at times. And he pushed me, he pushed me down on the ground. And as I looked up, all I could see was Jimmy Williams running as fast as he could and hit John from the back. Now, it took John about 15 to 20 minutes, and I know John remembers this because it knocked the breath out of him. And I really thought Jimmy had, I thought we were getting ready to have to take him to the hospital. But, <laughs> uh, Jimmy's no longer with us, but uh, he definitely had some, some good qualities, and uh, I'll always remember Jimmy taking up for me that day and running over John Packer. <laughs> uh, next we have, you got uh, George Anderson. Tommy Johnson cheered with George Anderson. So he wanted to say a few things. George was just a great guy. Everybody loved George in high school. And he was a big fella. Uh, what, what I remember most about him, uh, I'm sure all of you do with his laugh, he would get tickled and just sort of have a high pitched laugh. And uh, he <coughs> he's a great guy that everybody loved. Sadly, he lost his way too. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Dwight Evans. Now, somebody like to say something about Dwight? He's always a, a nice guy. Uh, I was looking through the uh, Diane's scrapbook, and uh, in the Crowley Pale, there was an article. And I got to read the article by David Beavers, and I really thought that was interesting to kind of come across that article by David. But I uh, uh, lost David several years ago. Uh, Irwin Simmons. Irwin was a very quiet guy. That's a quality that uh, probably some of us should have had more of. But uh, I remember Irwin, he was, uh, like I said, a quiet guy, but he was, he was always interesting to talk to. Irwin was a gentle giant. Yes, very well, very well said, a gentle giant. I'll tell you what Irwin can do. He can go out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, in the middle of the woods, he just hardly a road to a house, and they find the prettiest young girls out there in the middle of nowhere. That's why I'm telling you. He went down. He went down. He went down. He went down. And then uh, also in the class of 66, uh, Mary Louise uh, Taylor. He was another person that uh, was, uh, as I recall, kind of quiet, soft-spoken. Mary Louise had a hard life when she was a little girl, and a hard life due to illness as a grown woman. But in spite of all that, she was an amazingly strong woman. She raised a beautiful family and was always a wonderful friend. And I was blessed to have known her. All right, now for the class of 67. Uh, 
Ed, you didn't know you were going to do the uh, David Holland's head is the, the first one here. Uh, anybody have any memories about David? I understand David was killed in a, a plane crash uh, not too long ago. Yeah, David kind of ran in the side of a mountain. He was a plane. It was a bad incident. But <clears throat> after we got out of high school, me and David stayed in touch in the college, and then we both went to oil field. David ended up in Singapore, and he came back. I was in New Orleans as a manager for a service company, and I asked David, you going to go ride in an airplane? I had a seaplane that reported to me. So we were going to fly to Venice, the mouth of the river, and we were flying, and we were having to stay low due to the Air Force Base right south of where our office was until we got past it, and David said, well, we're flying kind of low. I said, yeah, we fly kind of low, David. He said, about 3,000 feet. I said, no, about 300 feet. <laughs> we were following the, the bayou and staying, probably went to 250 to 300 feet. But, I mean, my pilot had about 20,000 hours. So he was very experienced at it. But David, he was a little bit off on his, how far it was. But it was a tragic deal. He, like I say, they found him in Colorado. And um, I guess last fall. And, but he enjoyed himself. He'd been flying for quite a few years, and whenever I talked to him, he said, you want to go flying, Mike? And I said, David, I had pilots with 15 to 20,000 hours and not 1,000 hours, so I never did go flying with him, but um, he enjoyed himself over the last few years, and I'm sorry he's gone. All right, uh, C.A. Peterson is uh, the next one. Anybody got any memories about CA? Volleyball? Yeah, he was a uh, James Street member. My first Roy Crockett Tasty Stories. I'll just prove a way to do it. I'll tell a story. I don't know what year it was, but we had a no storm. We had a good snow And uh, one of the younger guys, Bob McDonald, if y'all probably know. CA had this thing about picking on Bob McDonald. So we was all Wayne and myself and CA were out there one day and Bob showed up. CA got a snowball and hit Bob in the face with it. Well, Bob got upset and went in the house crying. <laughs> well, he told his mother. And his mom was later, and she uh, she was cutting on slack. She took up for her child as any mother would do. So when Bob was going in the house, we told C.A., you better leave because baby's coming out and he's going to get you. <laughs> and C.A. backed up and said, are you scared of her? <laughs> at that time, that front door exploded. <laughs> Baby come out and had a cigarette hanging out of the mouth. And it was just a banging. When she went to talking word, we ain't never heard that. <laughs> she grabbed CA by the CA was pretty tall then. She grabbed CA by the shirt collar. And he bent down, obviously pulling him with her. And she got snow and started shoving it in his face. <laughs> that was shirt. And CA didn't want to cry, but his face was red as the day he was cutting. He couldn't move his eyes for his snow. But anyway, he learned his lesson. He didn't pick on Bob anymore. <laughs> and so we didn't have anything to do with it that, at that time. But CA was a good guy, and, and we listened to him. All right. Uh, Francis Copeland is the next classmate we've lost. Uh, Francis was my friend in the second grade when I first came to Auburn to school. So she was first one that befriended me in school. We were friends all the way through elementary. We got to high school and Francis was just a, an avid sports person and I was not. <laughs> and so she just took off with it like that. And she, she had some bad heart issues. Uh, she had a, a hard life. She lost her child to a motorcycle wreck and uh, didn't even kill her then. But I think that She's never recovered from her son's death. Joyce, what's where are you? I'm back here. <laughs> yeah, we just love Francis to death. 
Um, Frances loved sports. Even after she got sick, she still played softball, rode horses. She um, she just loved being outdoors and doing things. Randy Smith is uh, the last classmate that we've lost. Anybody got some memories of Randy? Randy was a very quiet person. Diane, what was he, our second or third cousin? I, I can't remember. I think he's third cousin. I, I don't think he's actually kin. I think he just lives on the rural road. <laughs> 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 Then his wife died, and their little boy, I believe, was adopted by uh, Randy's brother, if I remember correctly. Randy was a very quiet person. I don't know many of y'all ever hardly even talked to him because he was that quiet. But he, he, was, he was a good boy. Well, Diane, you play with her, sometimes that's close enough to be called Ken. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, That's our group. We, uh, you know, we certainly miss these folks, and we want to honor them uh, with this table here. So, Diane, it's all yours again. Teddy's having a little trouble with his light over here. Y'all. <laughs> you know, I told Lynn when the uh, class. I'm graduating the top ten. I'm the <laughs> top <laughs> Class of 66 was walking back up the hill. I, I had a, um, the other night about 11, 11.30, I had a vision that maybe while this uh, this table was being lit and um, and after everything had been said about them, that maybe we might just sing the alma mater. And um, do any of y'all remember the alma mater? <laughs> Sandra, can you remember? 